Seneca once provocatively declared, sometimes even to live is an act of courage. In a world fixated on superficial tricks and manipulation, what does it truly take to form genuine lasting connections? Is it about clever lines and psychological ploys, or something deeper? Epictetus wisely observed, the key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. But how do we attract and build relationships with such people? In this video, we'll explore the timeless wisdom of Stoicism and uncover the path to cultivating authentic, meaningful connections that will transform your life. This is not just passive viewing, it's an interactive journey. We invite you to actively participate, share your perspectives, and stay with us until the end. This odyssey promises not just knowledge, but an opportunity for profound self-reflection and transformation. Let's begin. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insightful content on Stoicism and personal growth. Now, let's embark on this adventure, together, the Stoic Perspective on Relationships. Marcus Aurelius, the philosopher king, offered this insight. The quality of your life depends on the quality of your relationships. Stoicism recognizes that our connections with others are central to our happiness and growth. But what does it truly mean to have quality relationships? The Stoics emphasize character and virtue as the foundation. Seneca advised, associate with people who are likely to improve you. It's not about status, wealth, or superficial traits, but about the content of one's character. We should seek out individuals who exemplify wisdom, justice, courage, and self-discipline. The Four Cardinal Virtues of Stoicism Epictetus elaborates, The key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. Surrounding ourselves with people who inspire us to be our best selves, who challenge us to grow, and who support us in our endeavors, is crucial for personal development. However, the Stoics also stress the importance of being a person of character ourselves. Epictetus teaches, First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. We must align our actions with our values and continually strive to embody the virtues we admire in others. Cultivating self-awareness and emotional regulation is key. Epictetus asserts, no man is free who is not master of himself. By understanding and managing our own emotions, we become better partners, friends, and family members. We learn to respond rather than react, to communicate effectively and to maintain equanimity in the face of challenges. Seneca advises, Anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury that provokes it. When we let emotions like anger or jealousy dictate our behavior, we damage our relationships. The Stoics encourage us to pause, reflect, and choose our response wisely. Ultimately, the Stoics remind us to focus on what is within our control, our own thoughts, actions, and attitudes. Epictetus teaches, there is only one way to happiness, and that is to cease worrying about things which are beyond the power of our will. We cannot control others, but we can work on being the best version of ourselves. By taking responsibility for our own personal growth and character development, we naturally attract like-minded individuals and cultivate more fulfilling relationships. As Marcus Aurelius wisely noted, waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. The Stoic perspective on relationships emphasizes the importance of character, virtue, and self-improvement. By embodying these qualities ourselves and surrounding ourselves with others who inspire us, we create the conditions for deep, meaningful connections. As Seneca beautifully put it, let us choose our friends for their good character, not their service. Let our reason for choosing our friends be because we respect their character. Cultivating Authentic Presence how often are we truly present with others, fully engaged in the moment? Marcus Aurelius reminds us, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Cultivating presence is a key aspect of building authentic connections with others. Presence starts with mindfulness, being aware and attentive in our interactions. It means setting aside distractions, putting down our phones, and giving others our full attention. Epictetus advises, when you are listening to someone, listen with your whole mind and heart. Don't be thinking about what you're going to say next or how you're going to respond. When we are fully present, we communicate to others that they matter, that we value their thoughts and feelings. 
Seneca observes, we should listen to not only what people say, but what they do not say. We should try to hear the message behind the words. By being attuned to both verbal and nonverbal cues, we demonstrate genuine interest and empathy. Epictetus further counsels, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. Developing the skill of active listening is crucial for cultivating presence. It involves not just hearing the words, but seeking to understand the meaning and emotion behind them. Asking thoughtful questions is another way to show presence. Seneca advises, we should ask questions that reveal the mind and character of the person with whom we are talking. By expressing curiosity and inviting others to share their perspectives, we create space for deeper connection and understanding. Communicating with sincerity and authenticity is also essential. Seneca asserts, one of the most beautiful qualities of true friendship is to understand and to be understood. When we express ourselves honestly and vulnerably, we invite others to do the same. We build trust by being genuine in our words and actions. Epictetus adds, speak only when it improves upon the silence. While presence involves active engagement, it also means being comfortable with stillness and reflection. Sometimes the most powerful moments of connection occur in shared silence, in the space between words. Cultivating presence also means being fully engaged in the activities we share with others. Seneca encourages whatever you do, do it with your whole being. Do not be one person in public and another in private. Whether we're having a conversation, sharing a meal, or working on a project together, bringing our full attention and effort enhances the quality of our interactions. Ultimately, presence is about being wholly ourselves while wholly attending to others. As Marcus Aurelius beautifully puts it, wherever you are, there you are. Make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as it happens. By cultivating mindfulness, active listening, sincere communication, and full engagement, we create the conditions for authentic presence. And in that presence, we open the door to deeper, more meaningful connections with others. As Epictetus wisely observes, the soul becomes dyed with the color of its thoughts. Let us color our interactions with the hues of presence, empathy, and understanding. Building emotional connection. Deep connections are built on a foundation of shared values and purpose. Zeno of Sidium, the founder of Stoicism, believed that living in accordance with reason and virtue was the path to happiness. When we align ourselves with people who share our core values, we create a strong basis for emotional connection. Epictetus advises, the key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. Surrounding ourselves with individuals who inspire us to be our best selves, who challenge us to grow, and who support us in our endeavors fosters a sense of shared purpose and mutual growth. Seneca elaborates, The wise man is content with himself, not in the sense that he wants nothing, but in the sense that he needs nothing. He needs friends, not to have someone to die for, but to have someone to live with. True emotional connection is not about dependency or neediness, but about choosing to share our lives with others who enrich our existence. Trust is also critical for emotional intimacy. Consistency and integrity in our words and actions foster trust. Epictetus says, first learn the meaning of what you say and then speak. Being reliable, following through on commitments and being honest even when it's difficult are ways to build trust. Seneca adds, I shall never be ashamed of citing a bad author if the line is good. Emotional connection thrives when we create a safe space for honesty and authenticity, even if it means admitting our own flaws or mistakes. By being transparent and accountable, we invite others to do the same. Expressing vulnerability is another pathway to emotional connection. Seneca reminds us we are all in the same boat in a stormy sea, and we owe each other a terrible loyalty. When we open up about our own struggles, fears, and dreams, we create opportunities for empathy and understanding. Epictetus encourages, if someone tells you that you can only gain their friendship by doing things against your principles, you should value your principles more. Emotional connection should not come at the cost of our integrity or values. True friends will respect and support us in staying true to ourselves. Providing support and being there for others during their challenges is also key to building emotional intimacy. Seneca advises, a friend is one soul abiding in two bodies. 
When we show up for others with compassion, patience, and understanding, we strengthen the bonds of trust and loyalty. Ultimately, emotional connection is about creating a shared space of acceptance, growth, and mutual care. As Marcus Aurelius beautifully puts it, accept the things to which fate binds you and love the people with whom fate brings you together, but do so with all your heart. By aligning ourselves with people who share our values, cultivating trust through consistency and vulnerability, and providing support through life's challenges, we create the foundations for deep emotional connection. As Epictetus wisely notes, the key is to keep company only with people who uplift you, whose presence calls forth your best. Let us seek out and nurture those relationships that bring out the best in us and others. The Role of Personal Growth Stoicism places great emphasis on continuous self-improvement. Marcus Aurelius reflects, Waste no more time arguing about what a good man should be. Be one. The commitment to being our best selves is inherently attractive. When we focus on personal growth, we become more interesting, resilient, and fulfilled individuals. Epictetus teaches, First say to yourself what you would be, and then do what you have to do. Personal growth starts with a clear vision of who we want to become. It involves aligning our actions with our values and continuously working towards becoming the best version of ourselves. Self-improvement doesn't mean perfection, but rather progress. Epictetus encourages us, no great thing is created suddenly. Growth is a gradual process that requires consistent effort and dedication. By setting meaningful goals and taking small steps each day, we can make significant strides over time. Seneca adds, as long as you live, keep learning how to live. Personal growth is a lifelong journey. There is always room for improvement and new lessons to be learned. By cultivating a love for learning and embracing a growth mindset, we open ourselves up to endless possibilities for development. Challenges and setbacks are inevitable in life and relationships. The Stoics view these as opportunities for growth. Epictetus advises, the greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. When we face obstacles with a resilient spirit, we develop strength of character and adaptability. Marcus Aurelius reminds us, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. By reframing challenges as opportunities for growth, we find the courage and creativity to overcome them. Each difficulty we surmount adds to our wisdom and resilience. Ultimately, one of the most powerful ways to inspire others is by leading by example. Seneca says, noble examples stir us up to noble actions. When we embody our values and pursue personal growth, we naturally attract others who are drawn to that energy. Our commitment to self-improvement can be a catalyst for positive change in those around us. Epictetus teaches, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. Personal growth is not just about intellectual understanding, but about living our values in action. By consistently aligning our behavior with our principles, we demonstrate the power of Stoic philosophy in a tangible way. In relationships, our personal growth journey can be a source of inspiration and support for our partners. As we work on becoming our best selves, we create space for others to do the same. By sharing our learnings, challenges, and triumphs, we foster an environment of mutual growth and encouragement. Self-improvement doesn't mean perfection, but rather progress. Epictetus encourages us, no great thing is created suddenly. Growth is a gradual process that requires consistent effort and dedication. By setting meaningful goals and taking small steps each day, we can make significant strides over time. Seneca adds, as long as you live, keep learning how to live. Personal growth is a lifelong journey. There is always room for improvement and new lessons to be learned. By cultivating a love for learning and embracing a growth mindset, we open ourselves up to endless possibilities for development. Challenges and setbacks are inevitable in life and relationships. The Stoics view these as opportunities for growth. Epictetus advises, the greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. When we face obstacles with a resilient spirit, we develop strength of character and adaptability. Marcus Aurelius reminds us, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. By reframing challenges as opportunities for growth, we find the courage and creativity to overcome them. Each difficulty we surmount adds to our wisdom and resilience. Ultimately, one of the most powerful ways to inspire others is by leading by example. Seneca says, 
Noble examples stir us up to noble actions. When we embody our values and pursue personal growth, we naturally attract others who are drawn to that energy. Our commitment to self-improvement can be a catalyst for positive change in those around us. Epictetus teaches, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. Personal growth is not just about intellectual understanding, but about living our values in action. By consistently aligning our behavior with our principles, we demonstrate the power of Stoic philosophy in a tangible way. In relationships, our personal growth journey can be a source of inspiration and support for our partners. As we work on becoming our best selves, we create space for others to do the same. By sharing our learnings, challenges, and triumphs, we foster an environment of mutual growth and encouragement. Ultimately, personal growth is about striving to live a life of virtue and meaning. As Seneca beautifully puts it, life is long enough and a sufficiently generous amount has been given to us for the highest achievements if it were all well invested. By dedicating ourselves to continuous self-improvement, we make the most of the precious gift of life and create a positive impact on those around us. Cultivating Resilience in Relationships No relationship is without its ups and downs. The Stoics teach us to maintain equanimity in the face of external events. Marcus Aurelius reminds us, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Cultivating resilience is key to navigating the challenges of relationships with grace and wisdom. Epictetus teaches, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. When faced with difficulties in our relationships, we have a choice in how we respond. By practicing mindfulness and self-awareness, we can pause before reacting and choose a response that aligns with our values. Seneca adds, the greatest remedy for anger is delay. When emotions run high, it's easy to say or do things we later regret. Taking a step back, breathing deeply, and allowing ourselves time to process can prevent impulsive reactions that damage our relationships. Conflicts and disagreements are a natural part of any relationship. The key is in how we communicate and resolve them. Epictetus advises, be willing to have your opinion changed. Be eager to learn from others. By approaching conflicts with an open mind and a willingness to understand different perspectives, we create space for constructive dialogue. Marcus Aurelius reminds us, whenever you are about to find fault with someone, ask yourself the following question. What fault of mine most nearly resembles the one I'm about to criticize? By reflecting on our own shortcomings and practicing empathy, we can approach conflicts with humility and compassion. Forgiveness and letting go of resentment are also important for resilience. Seneca says, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Holding on to grudges and bitterness only harms ourselves and our relationships. By practicing forgiveness, we free ourselves from the burden of resentment and create space for healing and growth. Epictetus teaches, we are not disturbed by what happens to us, but by our thoughts about what happens. Our interpretations and beliefs about events have a significant impact on our emotional resilience. By challenging negative thought patterns and cultivating a more balanced perspective, we can maintain a sense of equanimity even in difficult times. Ultimately, resilience in relationships comes from a strong sense of inner peace and self-sufficiency. As Seneca beautifully puts it, the wise man is self-sufficient. When we cultivate a deep sense of contentment and self-reliance, we are less easily shaken by the ups and downs of relationships. This doesn't mean we don't need or value our connections with others. Rather, it means we have a stable foundation within ourselves from which to weather life's storms. We can be fully present and engaged in our relationships while also maintaining a sense of perspective and inner strength. By practicing mindfulness, empathy, forgiveness, and self-reflection, we cultivate the resilience necessary to navigate the challenges of relationships with grace and wisdom. As Marcus Aurelius wisely notes, the art of living is more like wrestling than dancing. With a resilient spirit and a commitment to personal growth, we can meet life's challenges with courage and compassion, strengthening ourselves and our relationships in the process. Finding contentment within. Ultimately, the Stoics teach us that true happiness comes from within. Zeno of Sidium believed that the goal of life was to live in agreement with nature, accepting what is beyond our control. By cultivating inner contentment, 
we create a solid foundation for fulfilling relationships and a meaningful life. Epictetus reminds us, happiness is an inside job. Our sense of well-being and satisfaction should not be dependent on external circumstances or the actions of others. When we place our happiness in the hands of things we cannot control, we set ourselves up for disappointment and frustration. Instead, the Stoics encourage us to focus on what is within our power, our own thoughts, attitudes, and choices. Marcus Aurelius advises, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. By cultivating a mindset of gratitude, resilience, and purpose, we can find contentment regardless of our external situation. In relationships, this means appreciating our partners for their character and actions, not just external qualities. Epictetus counsels, Seek not that the things which happen should happen as you wish, but wish the things which happen to be as they are, and you will have a tranquil flow of life. When we accept others as they are and focus on their admirable qualities, we create space for genuine appreciation and connection. Seneca adds, It is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. True contentment comes from being satisfied with what we have, rather than constantly seeking more. In relationships, this means cherishing the love and connection we share, rather than focusing on what may be lacking. Cultivating inner contentment also involves finding joy and meaning in the present moment. Marcus Aurelius reflects, When you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. By practicing mindfulness and savoring the small pleasures in our daily lives, we infuse our relationships with a sense of gratitude and wonder. Epictetus teaches, He is a wise man who does not grieve for the things which he has not, but rejoices for those which he has. By focusing on the blessings in our lives and the strengths in our relationships, we shift our attention to what is good and meaningful. Ultimately, finding contentment within is about aligning our thoughts and actions with our values and living a life of purpose. Seneca advises, true happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. When we are grounded in our own sense of worth and meaning, we bring a sense of peace and stability to our relationships. This inner contentment allows us to weather the ups and downs of life with equanimity and grace. As Epictetus wisely notes, the greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. By cultivating resilience and finding joy in the journey, we create a sense of contentment that is not easily shaken by external circumstances. In the end, finding contentment within is about embracing the art of living well. As Marcus Aurelius beautifully puts it, very little is needed to make a happy life. It is all within yourself, in your way of thinking. By nurturing inner peace, gratitude, and purpose, we create a foundation for fulfilling relationships and a life well lived. Conclusion We've explored the timeless wisdom of Stoicism and how it can guide us in building authentic, meaningful connections. By focusing on character, cultivating presence, building emotional intimacy, pursuing personal growth, practicing resilience, and finding contentment within, we attract and sustain relationships that bring out the best in ourselves and others. Applying these principles takes practice and patience, but the rewards are immeasurable. Seneca encourages us, as is a tale, so is life. Not how long it is, but how good it is, is what matters. The quality of our relationships determines the quality of our lives. So reflect on how you can apply these stoic insights to your own relationships. Start small, but start today. Focus on being present, listening deeply, expressing yourself authentically, and appreciating the people in your life. Share your thoughts, experiences, and commitments to personal growth in the comments below. Let's create a community of wisdom seekers who inspire and support each other. Remember, this is not a quick fix or a set of gimmicks. It's a lifelong journey of self-discovery and growth. But it's a path worth treading, for it leads to the deep joy of genuine connection. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of Stoic wisdom for relationships. If you found value in these ideas, please like, share, and subscribe. Together, let's keep learning, growing, and supporting each other on this incredible journey of life. As Marcus Aurelius so beautifully puts it, when you arise in the morning, think of what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. Let's make the most of this privilege and cultivate connections that enrich our lives beyond measure.
Until next time, stay present, stay true, and stay connected. Thank you.